Science School. We are 12 year 8 and 9 girls with a passion for science. You asked us to answer the question, what is engineering? So girls, what do you think engineering is? It's just building stuff. Boring. All I think of is boring old men sat around drawing. Basically it's still boring and nothing we want to do. I doubt it's boring if they want us to look into it. This is a competition to win robotics equipment. It must be something about robots. What do robots have to do with buildings and bridges? Right, you three have no idea. We, why don't we split up into three groups and find out as much as we can about engineering to teach people? Sounds good to me. Right, girls, let's get this done. We'll meet back here at the end of the day and see what we found out. <laughs>
on campus here to observe what student you can look at. Well, thank you, James Watt. I'll be straight over to the university to see that we take home. Hi, Emily. There's one place in the world you'd love to visit. Where would it be? New York. New York. Right, so let's head there then and have a look at the world of Robert Fulton. In 1777, Robert designed and created the first steamer which took passengers from New York to Albany, a total of 300 miles in 62 hours. Not bad going for the 1700s. And in 1800, the Neapolitan commissioned him to create the first submarine, and he even developed the world's first torpedoes used by the British Navy. Pretty cool guy. Thanks for the steamer, submarines, and um, I guess thanks for the torpedoes, Robert Fulton. You really started to change my mind about engineering now, girls. Well, we've got one more left. Henry Ford. Ever heard of that, Emily? Only his surname. It's the same as the car. Did you sign the first car? No, that, that was Carl Spence in 1884. Whilst he didn't design the first car, he did develop the design of the first car that many Americans could afford. He changed the face of cars from a luxury, only available for a select few, so practical that many people could afford. Without him, most of our teachers would struggle to get to school and so would we. Oh, well, thanks, Henry Ford. I hate walking anywhere. So engineering isn't really just design British buildings, it's everywhere. Without the chemical engineers, we couldn't build big buildings or bridges because we wouldn't be able to lift materials up. We wouldn't have so many books and things to read, the steam engines, steamboats, portable cars, and nice cotton clothes to wear. We really do have a lot of thank you for. But I can't have noticed that they're all men. I know, it is rubbish. We try to find female mechanical engineers, but there just aren't that many. Lots of designs, um, many major products in the other areas of engineering. There just aren't many super fantastic ones in mechanical engineering. But from what you three have just told me, I'm going to change that. I'm going to make a robot. One that does everything and I want it to do more. That would be amazing. Can I help? Me too. Me three, but we don't have any equipment. Can anyone think of a way we can get some? I might just have an idea. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You girls have a lot to live up to to try to make chemical and electrical engineering as interesting. They sound pretty dull to me. That's a challenge we're ready to accept. Chemical engineering combines the jobs of a chemist and that of an industrial engineer. So what kind of things do, electric, um, do chemical engineers do? Well, they design ways to clean up pollution and prevent it from happening in the first place. They look at the ways that dispose of toxic waste safely and ways to treat our soil so it doesn't pollute the water. Wow, that's pretty cool. So without them, we would have a lot more pollution, lots of toxic waste lying around, making us poorly and the sewage floating around in the water. Exactly, that's not all they do. They are also involved in the, in the medical industries. They help design and manufacture drugs, as well as working with medical and surgery supplies. One other way that they help the medical industries is by developing and manufacturing things like artificial kidneys and prosthetics. You're forgetting the nine technology they do. Wait, I was with you until then. What's the learning technology? It just means dealing with things that are smaller than a thousandth of a millimetre. They can use molecules that are this tiny to help purify contaminated groundwater in areas of natural disasters or poverty. Nanotechnology can also be used to help alter DNA for stem cell therapies to help poor people. Wow, those chemical engineers are some fancy people. Without them, we'd be in a sticky situation. Right, that's chemical engineers dealt with, and now let's look at electrical engineers too. Let me guess, things to do with electricity and making things work? Pretty good guess, I think. They are engineers that deal with anything to do with electronics. They design and, design and build components for electrical circuits like resistors, capacitors, inductors, transistors and diodes, as well as designing these large components. They also do, deal with the design and fabrication of tiny electronic components. These are used to make our mobile, power, mobile phones get even more powerful without them getting any bigger. Do you remember TV a few years ago when the signal wasn't that great and it wouldn't work in bad weather? Yeah, it's always in the middle of Sesame Street. Well, you have electrical engineers to thank for the digital TV signal. They were responsible for developing the digital signal and organising the changeover from analog to digital signal. Now you can watch Sesame Street without worrying the signal will go. What a relief. Electrical engineers are also responsible for designing transformers, generators to get electricity safely and efficiently to your home, and designing, developing, and transmission of information by cable or fiber optics. This is how we get our internet. Without that, we won't be able to get do our research for you. 
Wow, chemical and electrical engineers do a lot. I thought the last group had all the cool stuff to talk about with mechanical engineering, but even have some pretty cool uses. Let's hope the next group can find things just as exciting about civil engineering. Have you ever heard of civil engineering? We're here to teach you all about it, and it's just as interesting as mechanical, chemical and electrical engineering. So, what do you know about civil engineering? Um, well, it's not just about buildings and stuff. It's clear you don't know much about civil engineering. With the help of some specialists, I'm sure you'll learn a lot. Civil engineering isn't just about buildings. It's a professional engineering discipline that deals with the design, construction and maintenance of the physical and naturally built environment, including works like roads, bridges, canals, dams, buildings and aeroplanes. That's great! I'd love to find out more about it, and perhaps become as famous as Elsa Eves, the first ever female member of the American Society of Civil Engineers. Hi, I'm Jordan and I'm a civil engineer. Did you know that civil engineering is the second oldest engineering discipline after military engineering? I specialised in aerospace engineering, which helps a lot of people in their everyday lives. Aerospace engineering? What is that? Well, that's a great question, and something that not everybody knows about. Aerospace engineering is a primary field of engineering in the production of aircraft and spacecraft. And don't forget it's divided into two main branches, aeronautical and astronautical engineering. Um, that's right. As an, as an aerospace engineer, I can work on a team planning a shuttle trip to service the Hubble Space Telescope, design aeroplane wings that change shape to enhance maneuverability, design satellite phone technology so that data can be sent and received from remote areas, and build satellites that help us monitor global climate changes from space. Wow, you can do all that. It sounds really cool to be an aerospace engineer. I had no idea that this could all be in civil engineering. What else is there to learn? I'm glad to find aerospace engineering interesting. Wait until you hear about construction engineers. What sort of engineer are you? Hi, I'm Leah and I'm a construction engineer. My work deals with the designing, planning, construction and management of infrastructures all across the world. I was one of the engineers who worked on the Burj Khalifa building in Dubai, which is the tallest man-made structure in the world, standing at 829.8 metres high. How many engineers made it? Well, it took more than 380 skilled engineers on site. Also, the design is very complex, and many different factors meant that it was very difficult to build. What kind of factors? Dubai is one of the hottest environments in the world and reached up to 50 degrees Celsius in the summer. This meant that the engineers had to figure out how to set 45,000 cubic metres of reinforced concrete in such ex extreme weather. So how did they do it? They decided to pump ice, ice liquid concrete into the 55,000 tonnes of steel frame during the night. Engineers managed to create a building which stands over 800 metres high. That's amazing and a brilliant idea. It must have taken a lot of engineers, a lot of time and thought to get even a building that stands that high. Exactly. Engineers are always pushing the boundaries to make even bigger and more daring buildings. That's fascinating. I never knew so much would be needed for the construction of a building. And there's still more to learn. Do you have any building work going around school? Yeah, we're building a new sports hall outside. Perfect, let's go down to our side and speak to our final specialist, a structural engineer. Hi. Hi, I'm a structural engineer and I work most commonly in the design of buildings. However, I also work on the designs of machinery, medical equipment and vehicles to make sure that all of the function works safely. We have a new building we have met here at school. Yes, you do. And that building would require an engineer like me to work alongside the architect to form the mathematical and scientific ideas of the buildings to make sure that the structure can fulfill its requirement. In this case, a sports hall and be structurally safe. Your job sounds extremely important. I never thought about how much time and effort has to go into producing a building like our sports hall. No wonder it's taken so long to plan the design. 
Exactly. Now every time you use it, you'll think about all the different engineers that are involved in its design, construction, getting water to it, the drainage and sewage, electricity and circuits, not to mention the designing of the equipment and its installation. I'll never look at buildings the same way again. Let's go meet with the other girls and see what they learn. Yeah. So girls, what have we all found out? Well, there are four main types of engineering, civil, mechanical, electrical and chemical. They are split into lots of smaller categories too. Engineering can't be classified as just one thing, it's everything. It's all around us. Almost everything we use has been designed or thought about by an engineer. Even something simple like turning on a tap isn't simple. Engineers had to figure out how to collect, store, purify and transport it. Then they designed the taps to allow it to flow into our homes. It truly is an amazing field. And to think we all thought it was boring when we started this project. I'm so glad we had the time to look into engineering properly. It's really opened my eyes. Let's hope we win the robotics equipment and get the chance to keep exploring engineering.